So the uh, bartender says, that's not a duck. That's my wife's new genetic enhancements. <laughs> right? Yeah. Did I say that right? I, I know. Did you get the equipment working? I, it's Yeah, no. We're, I, we, got, we got signal? Yep. We're I think, hang on. Hey, we're broadcasting live. There All right. Yeah, there we go. I'm in space. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the League of Space Pirates tour ship. And this is our rehearsal space, which, see, air quotes, means it used to be our... Um, cargo space, but now it's a rehearsal space. So we are in space right now, broadcasting throughout the galaxy. Uh, I don't know where you are watching, but hopefully you are uh, enjoying this on whatever technology you've got. Um, one note, uh, I believe that this may be going through a wormhole and getting some people in other time zones, which would be amazing. So if you are not where we are, we're you know, in space, in other planets, traveling the galaxy, uh, and you're you know, on some lonely, single planet by yourself, just unable to you know, get onto other planets, um, let us know. So first of all, tell us what planet you're on. There's a little thing on the side. You can tell us that. And also, um, if you're in another period of time, we want to know uh, what you want to know about where we are. So, um, yeah, later in the show, we're going to have some live feedback. So get ready to do that. And the Carltron is going to make it official. Hey, we are live from space. This is League of Space Pirates. And this is our first episode. It's the There's No Winter in Space, non-denominational holiday solstice special. It goes in some order like that. I've just made up the order. And uh, regardless of what religion you are, we've got something for you. So if you're a neo-atheist, or you could be a Jacksonite, or you could be uh, an emoticon, whatever it is, we guarantee you're going to have some fun. So let's bring out my merry band of band. Come on in. Here's Mungo. He's going to be playing keyboards. Here's Parrot. He's on the bass. Rusty, he's on guitar. And last but definitely not least, here's Chroma. And she sings back in vocals. All right. Now, one other thing. This show is brought to you by no one. It's brought to you by us. So, can you see this? So buy our stuff. Spacepirate.org. You can get this beautiful comic book and ancient Earth technology vinyl record. If you have a hand crank device that plays records, you could use this even without electricity. So that's pretty good stuff. All right, so that's all the that. If you want to sponsor us in the future, get in touch. And now we're going to play you a holiday a favorite. This is a song called Elegant Universe. <laughs> Bounce 
walk away from you. Lots of desperation, and a feeling in the net. My heart's reaching and raising, I'm on the other side of you. If you see me lying on the floor, it's okay, it's okay. If you see me lying on the floor, it's okay, it's okay. I'm just taking a break from breathing. 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 I'm just taking a break. Thank you. All right, what's coming up next? Oh, hey, we're going to have Mungo's Minute. So Mungo, come on up. Hello, my name is Mungo. And I am from the future where numbers and math and science are all but a dream. Here you may have heard of Fibonacci's number and things of that order, ways to organize natural things. You may not have known that Fibonacci's numbers have existed since long before then, before his space, before his time, before your existence. We existed within the mathematics, within the science, within the stars. And now we are here in the future waiting for you. We are here. Come join us. Thank you, Mungo, for setting the holiday mood. And, uh, all right, we're going to bring on our uh, first guest tonight. We've got the lovely and talented Jen Wender. Come on out. And actually, here, come over to this microphone. Chrome is going to give you a little space. And talk to me for a moment. So, Jen. Hi. Hello. Welcome to our ship. Have you, have you spent much time in space? Yeah. Not, but not too much time in front of a microphone. No. No. Okay. So right, talking right into that microphone. Okay. There you go. Yeah. So not much time in space. So this is actually is this your first time in space? Yes. She's a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We won't hurt you. Well, welcome to our ship. Thanks for coming aboard. And uh, whoa, we're gonna play a song. No, we're not. <laughs> Um, so you're known as the uh, the River City Vegan, is that right? That is correct. So you're gonna have to explain what veganism to, is um, to people, because maybe they're not familiar with that religion. Okay. So basically, um, you don't eat or wear or uh, use anything that it was once alive and breathing and eating. So no animals whatsoever. Or people. Or poor or, or people. Okay. <laughs> That's just good to know, because yeah, you gotta be clear. Nothing with a face. Nothing with a face. All right, so um, excellent. Thank you for explaining that. Now, here's my question for you, because we have a lot of genetically engineered meat. You know, we, we don't eat meat in the future. Okay. But they make it in <laughs> labs now. All right. Because those animals are all in, in zoos. I mean, they're so rare now. Right. So um, what's your policy about that? Is that meat if it's made out of in a lab? Um, well, uh, you know, my region doesn't really have those labs, so um, maybe, maybe, uh, it still kind of sounds kind of gross. <laughs> sounds kind of gross. <laughs> All right, I'll take that. So, um, so is this is our holiday special. You're going to make us a holiday meal? Right. We're going to do um, kale salad, and it's going to be, um, it's, it's going to be a, a healthy holiday so that you can uh, feel good for the coming year. Sounds great. Now, if we don't have kale on our planet, so what kale, can you substitute? Um, you Genetically modified meat? <laughs> <laughs> um, you, no. could, you could substitute um, mustard greens um, or maybe some sort of moss that may grow as long as it's, it's not poisonous. Moss. moss. <laughs> non poisonous moss salad, everyone. <laughs> All right. Sophilian fungus. 
That's a that's a tasty treat. See, so I haven't had it. Check it out. Okay. All right. So so a kale or substitute as you need salad. All right. So go ahead. You've got all your stuff set up, and, and I'll let you take center stage over here. Right. And, and uh, you can talk right into the camera there, that camera the right microphone, there. and tell them what you're making, and I'll I'll, I'll narrate it for you. Okay. So, so come, over, come, over here. come over to the right spot right here. All right. So this is kale. Can can you hear me on the mic? <laughs> it's this uh, green leafy vegetable right here. So what you want to do is you want to break it up into bite-sized pieces. Um, and then w and you definitely need to make sure that you wash the kale uh, first. I don't know what kind of you know chemicals that are on your planet, but um, this is pre-washed kale. So the next thing that you're going to do is you're going to take uh, something called a grapefruit, um, which is not a grape. Um, it is a fruit, however. and since, uh, you know, from everything that we know, plants don't have uh, feelings and this one's already been plucked, it's okay that you're getting ready to uh, scrape off quite a bit of the skin. So um, <laughs> we're going to use this grater here. Um, and we're basically going to zest uh, the grapefruit. Now, this takes a little bit of time. So uh, in the essence of saving that time on the show, uh, we already have some of the zest right here. And what we're going to do is I'm going to pour it into this bowl right here. So pouring the grapefruit zest into the bowl. Now, we want to make sure that we use the entire grapefruit. So I have this trusty knife right here. Um, and we're going to use, we're going to cut the grapefruit and then squeeze out the juice. So the juicer right here. And you want to get all of the little meaty bits. So again, we're very glad that this isn't a creature and it is a grapefruit. <laughs> and in the, again, in the essence of time, we have grapefruit juice that is already here. So I'm going to pour that into there. Then you're going to want to use some sort of vegetable oil. Um, I'm using olive oil. And so we're going to pour that into our bowl. Um, all right, now to give it a little bit of spice and some kick, you're going to want to have chopped garlic. So I'll pour it the on. You're going to want, it depends on how much you like garlic. I like everything really spicy. So I use about three cloves of garlic that's been chopped. Pour that into there. Um, you're also going to want to add some salt. So here is the salt. Pour all this into your bowl. And some pepper. Fresh ground is best. Um, so do about... 15 to 20 turns of your pepper there. And then the last thing that you want to do is to make this the perfect blend of your kind of tangy and your spicy and your salty. Um, you're going to want to add about a tablespoon um, of maple syrup. If you don't have maple syrup on your planet, you can use agave nectar. The agave nectar. Okay. <laughs> um, and so we'll pour that in there. Now, the really interesting thing about kale is that normally you have to cook kale in order to get all of the nutrients out of it because otherwise it, your system won't be able to break down the strong vegetable cellulose walls. So the secret to a really good kale salad is once you pour all of this kind of dressing into your kale salad, um, you're going to want to massage it like you're, you're washing your hair. So. Um, I recommend you take any jewelry that you may have off, and you also pre-wash your own hands um, since you're going to be handling the salad. Everyone's very excited about the massage part. <laughs> <laughs> so you're just going to basically scrunch it down in there, just I like you're. I want everyone to see this. Look it up <laughs> like that here. Is that, is that a good shot of scrunching? Oops. Oops she's massaging. Yeah. Massage. And you're going to no, start to... Going. Okay, you got it? You got a good grip on this? <laughs> you're going to notice the color of the kale actually starts to change, so it gets a darker green. Um, and it kind of shrinks a little bit. Oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> By the way, the, the show is now just going to be half an hour of Jen massaging kale. No, <laughs> I think this may be our most popular segment ever. You're um, going to come on every month and do this, right? Just massage kale. Right, first. yes, yes. She's our <laughs> new member of our crew. The, uh, the subscription rate will skyrocket. <laughs> yes, it will be paid for, for view after this. <laughs> All right, so do you want me to continue? No, whenever you're done. And whenever you're done. <laughs> okay, you can set it down okay, now. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> um, so we're now we basically have our our kale perfectly massaged and totally edible. Um, the only thing that I would recommend adding to this after the fact um, would be some nuts if if you like. Great. <laughs> 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 some, <laughs> some more nuts would be great, or um, cashews if you have them. But the last thing that we're going to do is put this in a pretty bowl um, so that you can serve it at your next holiday party. Is it all done? Can we try it? Um, yeah. Who wants to try it? Yeah, Rusty does. Okay, <laughs> Rusty, come and, come and take a taste. Give, give him the money shot. Sure. <laughs> Carl Tron overload. <laughs> What's the verdict? <laughs> Edible, delicious, amazing, superlative. There are no words on your planet for how good that is. All right. <laughs> it's a winner. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming on, Jen. Do you want to tell everybody how they can find you in the cyberspace? Sure. Uh, so if your planet gets uh, internet access, you can find me at uh, RVA. R V A vegan and that's V E G A N dot com. So R V A V E G A N. I think the Carl Tron might type that into the sidebar <laughs> for you too. Yeah. All right, excellent. Hey, thanks so much for coming on the ship. You're Mmm, <laughs> <laughs> tasty. All right, excellent. Hey. We've got some uh, crafty chaos about to happen here. So one thing you might not know about Chroma is that she's not just a talented assassin, also backing vocalist, but and, and creaking in her clothing. <laughs> but she is uh, she is a craft maven. She she is talented in many ways. So since it's the holidays, we thought maybe she she'd take a challenge here to show us how she can use her crafty skills to make something. So I don't know what it's going to be, but she wanted me to challenge her. So what I've done is I put together uh, an assortment of um, crafty items or non-crafty items, as the case may be. And we're going to see what she can do in two minutes with this. So uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to give her this bowl. We're going to put two minutes on the clock, and then the band is going to jam a bit. Um, as, as Carl Tron said, she, he, he, they're going to space jam a bit. Sorry about that. All right, so uh, let's give her her supplies. I'll tell you what they are. All right, so her mystery bowl contains one gorilla, two ancient earth discs of some sort. We don't know what these do. Two toy wheels, a very rare and expensive set of feathers, two crystal things, I think they're dolithium, two buttons, We'll have those in the future. Some keyboard parts. And a man with no head or foot. Alright, you've got your items, Chroma. Good luck. Oh, and she's going to provide her own item. This is Bicycle Tube, because everyone rides bicycles in the future. Alright, have at it. Good luck, Chroma. <laughs> You can talk while you're doing this, by the way. Yeah, I can talk. I want to explain what's happening. Yeah, yeah. So this is a bicycle tube, which is dead and broken. So because it's thin rubber, we're going to cut it up and make earrings out of it.
learned her skills of slicing, fighting off hordes of enemies with her laser and her sword. Yeah, so, we had extra flush laying around, so I figured instead of let it rot, we could tan it. cool this looks that was just a tire yeah. and now it's an absolutely gorgeous earring there's tire here's earring magic you can make a whole bunch of earrings other stuff for your head Very big earrings. Very big earrings. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Chroma. Excellent work. You just, you won the challenge. I did. Yes. With my prize. Uh, what did she do with the great? Not fruit? being kicked off the ship. <laughs> is your prize. Excellent. All right. Well, let us get back to the holiday music. This is a holiday special. You can't stop without some holiday music. So this is um. We're gonna let her get her her gear back. In. And I want to remind you, we can answer your questions about the future where we are, because you're in the past, we're in the future. I assume, if you're, if you're getting this through the signal through the wormhole, I mean, if you're just on one of the other planets, you know what I'm talking about. But if you're not, um, hey, use that little sidebar function and um, ask us questions. And um, No stock tips, sorry. No um, lotto numbers and no, what else? No World Series scores. We don't know what that is, but I'm guessing that's still, that was a thing back then. Uh, yeah, we can't hook you up with any of that. Okay, but do ask your questions because a little bit later we'll, we'll, we'll gladly answer them for you. All right, so we're getting ready for our next piece of music for you. Uh, this is, are we ready? This is called She's a Star. Nope, that's not called She's a Star. <laughs> Thank you. 
So, coming up next is, uh, I think we're going to have something really interesting, but what's wrong? I, I get to talk. You, oh, Jesus. Uh, Rusty says, what do you have to say, Rusty? I'm going to talk. You talk into the microphone. Just, I'm not allowed to talk into the microphone. Yeah, you, can, you can do that right now. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to be talking about holiday space gift ideas. And since I'm in very familiarized with ancient Earth, Technologies. I'm going to talk about ancient Earth um, stuff that I like. You're um, an ancient Earth expert. Yeah, I like to study that stuff. So uh, something we had no idea about. You're going to talk yeah. right. In, he's um, not used to a microphone, so talk right. Right. I'm tall too. That, 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 um, that's a microphone. So what I really like are the Pez dispensers of the Muppetarian variety. They had a very good one. I liked the uh, Gonzo. He was blue. I don't know what you're talking about. They were these things that dispensed this candy that was delicious. And you ripped their heads off, and they would spit out the candy out of their neck. Um, Thank goodness we are not primitives like those people back then. But they were Muppetarians. There were these I don't know what that is either. They were um, a human subspecies of some sort. They had a band as well, which is why I was studying them. Okay. It was very, very good. Um, they had a great drummer. Uh, Adam. <laughs> okay. But the, the, the Pez was delicious. Isn't history fascinating? Fascinating. I Absolutely. love learning about history. Absolutely amazing. But I think that would be a great gift idea if you could get a customized Pez. Custom Pez head ripper offer candy. Yes. Any of your enemies, someone who you don't like. You could just rip their head off and eat candy out of them. Yeah. So I think that would be a great gift. Idea. Great. So Rusty would like, hey everyone in the band, Rusty would like a, a Can we make an Uber head Uber? ripper offer candy thing. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Is that is that the sum total of your that's holiday that's suggestions? That's, well, yeah, that's. But I think I mean because you can go anywhere with the with the Pez dispenser in that in that regard. You can make it. You know, um, it could be anyone you like. Okay. You can customize Pez dispenser. All right. Thanks, Rusty. Thank you. You're welcome. Good job. All right. I talk on the mic. <laughs> <laughs> this is a holiday specialist for everybody. All right, let's bring on our next guest. This is Jessica. She's just joined us on the ship to teach us some space pirate yoga because that's something that would be very good for all of us. So, uh, hey, welcome Jessica to the ship. Okay. Hey, you want to talk on the microphone? Oh, okay. 
Jessica, what is this religion of yoga that you talk about? <laughs> this is a holiday special, so I assume it's just another. Do you have like holidays or something? No. No. There's just no holiday. Help. The holiday of oh, health. Oh, it's a health religion. Okay, I, I yes. know about these. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. On a healthy planet. Talk right into that. Hello. You now you're in space <laughs> on a microphone. So, especially with the holidays, most people are looking to stay healthy and fit and trim, perhaps. So today I'm going to show you a very pirate-appropriate pose, plank pose. Um, it's a great um, posture to do for your core and for your back. It does not wrench your neck or back. So I will show you. I'm going to go down here. Uh-oh. I know. We're going <laughs> to adjust the camera. It's not going to go up. Um, everybody in the band going to do this, too? <laughs> Let's do it Otherwise, together. you have to walk the plank. Do we have I'll take the place. Uh, I take up a lot of room. I have a question. Does I, this I yoga, the God around. takes sacrifices? Does this sacrifice? Are you volunteering? Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> this primitive religion. Yoga God requires me to shut up. <laughs> 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 All right, so we're going to let we're gonna let Jessica show us the, the plank. Can I the take walk this off or is that bad? Sure. All right, she's going to show us the walk the plank pose. Hopefully right, you'll be able to see here. her on the camera. She's going to okay. get there, and we're going to adjust to hopefully show this. So I'm just going to show this from all fours. Move backwards. I'm going to move backwards. Yeah, keep going. Go right at his feet. Right back there. Keep going. Okay. Yes. Perfect. Right. Let's see if we can get this up. Okay. I'm going to put this down. Is that going to work? Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Okay. Here's some, there you go. Parents right. going to hold it for you. So if you, you can start on all fours. The biggest thing with yoga is form. So you want to be stacking your joints. So this is going to be shoulders over wrists. Spread your fingers wide and have your hands flat so you do not go into your wrists in a bad way. All right. Okay. All right. And then you want your head in line with your spines. You don't want to drop it here or there. Can <laughs> you keep up? Keep up. So find a space that aligns with your spine, just like this. And yeah, butt not high, butt not low, but just straight in line. I can and to move if you have this goes well with kale salad. <laughs> if you have wrist problems, you can actually come down your forearm, like like so somewhat. <laughs> and to make sure the right distance, you can grab for your elbows to make sure that you have the right distance between them. All right, that's good. And, and how long should one stay in this pose? Like three hours or something? Well, when I teach, I'm really kind. And I do like 10 seconds. Um, but seconds. you can do 30 seconds to a minute, depending on how much you want to turn it on. So there you go. Have a happy, happy, healthy holiday. Happy solstice. Thank you very much, Jessica. All right. Big hand for Jessica and Space Pirate Yoga. She's going to be back hopefully next month with more yes. Space Pirate poses for you. Excellent. All right. So, hey, guess what? It is time for questions from the past. Has anyone? Wait, wait. Carl Tron is is researching. He's going to give us a question from the past, and one somebody in the band is going to answer a question from the past for us. Assuming that's, I mean, I, I, again, I assume you're all on current planets, but it just it's a guess I had that this may go through a wormhole and may end up on another planet in another time. And uh, wait, what what was the question, Carl Tron? <laughs> no, no questions so far. No, there's a question. It's is there a question? Oh, there is a question. <laughs> what kind of lasers do you make? <laughs> what kind of lasers do you make? Rifles, cannons, swords, crossbows? Yes. What kind of lasers do we make? We don't make lasers. As if there we was another entity to be here to answer. Yeah, I know. Questions. That is a great question. Um, the answer is we don't make lasers. <laughs> Maybe you do. Excellent. All right. Um, there's still some time to ask us questions from the past. I'll give it another chance. You should be typing right now. And uh, we're going to have uh, Parrot's going to come up here, I believe, is what's happening next. So, all right. But Parrot's going to be up great right down there. But, all right. And then we're going we're gonna to have one more time. Holidays are a good time to remember the importance of family, if only because you can use them. Thank you for the lesson. 
you can use them as an excuse to get out of a bunch of boring holiday parties that you'd rather not go to. Now, I'm holding a holiday party, and, and I, I invited a bunch of the crew to go to that party, and I just thought in the spirit of the season, I'd, you know, share the excuses that they, that they gave for not going. For instance, Chroma got back to me, and she said, Dear Parrot, thank you for the invitation. Unfortunately, yesterday a hive mind invaded our home, assimilated our cat, and also took our good snow shovel. Uh, in the midst of this double family crisis, we will not be able to attend your holiday celebration. Well, I'm sorry what, about what happened to your alleged cat, but <laughs> uh, the cat you look like you're bearing it well, so moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Mungo also responded. He said, Dear Parrot, thank you for the invitation. Unfortunately, my brother was showing off his uh, shape-shifting abilities, and he did such a good job of turning into a dog that he now thinks that he's just a dog. Uh, and he doesn't know that he can actually turn back. This is in turn given our actual dog a replacement complex and I have to take them both to the vet and therefore will not be a part of your one night only holiday spectacular. Um, thank you Mungo. That was not plausible, but it was thought. Uh, last but not least, Rusty got back to me. He said, Dear Rusty. Rusty. Uh, that's great. Okay. Oh, it's rain. I admit I'm scraping the bottom of the barrel, but <laughs> he got back to me at any rate, which was a surprise in itself. Dear Parrot, thank you for the invitation. Unfortunately, I have become caught in an infinite recursive time loop in which my grandson slash myself repeatedly inspires my love of science fiction and then loans me money to build a time machine. As a result, I will not be able to caught in an infinite recursive time loop in which my grand and that actually goes on like this for several more pages. Uh, I won't read it all. But I get the point. You're not coming to the party. So well done, Rusty. First prize for you. Uh, just to let you know, I'm not coming to any of your parties either. Because I don't like you. So and, wait, um, I'm the only one coming? <laughs> no, you, you're lucky. <laughs> and my, my goldfish is like a werewolf or something. If that's, you know, if you need an excuse. Anyway, I hope this was helpful. Um, and merry something to e all of you, each and every one. And, um, oh, party at my house. Thank you, Parrot. All right, and hey, we're back to questions from the past. Do you have a question from the past? We have a question from the past. All right. Does the League of Space Pirates have a signature fragrance in the works? <laughs> Funny you should ask. Looking at me for it. Chroma, my blood. Chroma's currently wearing it. The smell of the type of musk. <laughs> what is what is it called, Chroma? <laughs> Hopefully Rusty's not oh working God. on one. Very scared now. <laughs> yes, it's the scent of blood, packaged exclusively by Chroma. If you'd like to see what it smells like, just ask her, and she will not help you out at all. She'll show you what it smells like. Thank you for asking. I don't think you want to question find out. Nope. We have another question from the past. Have household pets evolved since my time, 2013? If so, which... Hi, 2013? Oh, sorry. Ah. Which pets and what have they evolved to? What what pets do we have now? What do you guys like? What are your favorites? I don't believe pets. <laughs> okay, Mungo's anti-pets. That's a personal sure. thing. I call it a dinner. <laughs> I have a goldfish. Werewolf. Goldfish still werewolf. exist. How big is your goldfish? The size of a werewolf. The size of a werewolf. It's a goldfish werewolf thing. That's that has happened. Any other? I mean, I have I have the living mold stuff. The living mold stuff is awesome. You can put them in little tanks or big cages. They expand the fit, but do not leave them alone in your house without some thing around them because it will that will be it, and then you'll live in a living mold. So living mold and werewolf goldfish and eating pets sometimes, which we don't advocate because of our vegan friends on their planet, Begonia. All right, what other what other questions from the past do we have? Uh. <laughs> we have a poor grammar question. Poor grammar question, okay. <laughs> Don't make fun of our fans and followers from across the galaxy. No Carl Bot does not understand. Carl Tron. Is Carl Tron. Tron. Carl Bot. What are Terry Cloth primate hybrids still flourishing in the universe? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. Um, the Terry Cloth hybrid pirate is, uh, has its own world now. So that's awesome. It's really fun to visit. Super, super soft. Oh, my God. It's like the best place ever. Anyway, yes, yes. Okay. I heard there's uh, monkeys on that. Monkey planet. planet. Yes, it's, it's called the planet of the monkeys. Something like that. Do they monkey around? <laughs> there's no monkey around and no barrels. All right. Excellent questions. Any others? Are we good to go? All right. Thank you very much. And now we are going to uh, play 
another song for you. This is our last one, the last song of the, of the special. I hope you've been enjoying and celebrating in whatever way. And uh, this one is, uh, this one is um, dedicated to Carl Sagan, who is the patron saint of uh, our now expanded universe, all the planets that we uh, have, have uh, you know, taken over all over the galaxy. That comes from the visions of this wonderful, wonderful prophet. So uh, this is a song for Carl Sagan. tuning in to the very first annual League of Space Pirates uh, non-denominational solstice holiday special here in space on our ship, the Detritus. Thank you all of our wonderful guests. Uh, Jen, the River City Vegan, was here. We had uh, Jessica, the... Did I say that right? Jessica, the uh, Space Pirate Yogist. Uh, we had Chroma, of course, we were here for Crash, Rusty, Parrot, Mungo, all of you, Carltron, back there, the Carltron thing. Oh, oh, what's oh, going on? What's well, I, the ship is um, not under attack, just in a, um, um, something. I don't know. Can't make anything. Right. We gotta go. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh, I gotta go. Station! Uh.